Well, well, well. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome. It's master time. I actually got into tech today, so we're going to try our best. I don't think we're going to get that lucky, but uh, he's already phased, so that's good. He phased at 10 minutes 24, a little bit slow, but not too bad. And uh, yeah, we're just going to get on. Uh, now, I said I wanted to do something different to Grothmar today, but what I will at least do in Grothmar is I'll open the vault, I'll do the jumping puzzle, and I'll do the strike mission. So, once again, I'm on EU. Um, so, if you guys want to join my squad soon, after tech's done, I'll either, I'm currently in a, You guys can't see, but I'm currently in a squad. We'll get that done, and then uh, and then we'll move on. So, hopefully, it's all good. Hello to everyone in chat. Jerry, it's good to see you. Benji, Mr. Fantasia, uh, who mailed me about the AT thing. So, uh, hopefully, he's ready for that in a, uh, at the end of the stream, about two hours from now. I might end the stream... To, since today's the first day we're meeting up, I might end the stream a little bit earlier just so that I can take the time to go have a shower and come back um, and then uh, sort myself out. So, uh, and, then, and then we'll be playing. But uh, yeah, it uh, should be pretty good. Uh, Lambda Ghost, did they say build templates were coming at the end of the month? I thought they said that they were coming one week after the announce. Was it? Oh, no, no, no. It was end of the month, wasn't it? They did. They said end of the month. You're right. You're right. Why, why are we talking about that? I keep getting more and more messages about the build uh, series. The worst thing is, I've not since I beat Borderlands 3, I've not even been playing much WoW. So the WoW script has halted. So the reason the build template stopped was because I got really obsessed with doing this World of Warcraft script. And now, I haven't even worked on that for a couple of days. I'll tell you what I've done yesterday and today. Aside from the streams and sort of the standard stuff. I've been PvPing like mad. That's that's what I've been doing. Basically, my, my placement's reset, which if you guys remember a while ago. So I'm trying to rush through, get all 120 games in uh, in like two days. That's what I've been doing. And anybody want to guess how many games I've got out of 120 in about two days? It's, it's, it's a little bit less than 120 because I did have some prerequisite games. But does anyone want to guess where I am right now in the evening of the second day? Yeah, I played a shit ton of Hollow. Yeah, they were all Hollow games. Hollow is really... When you get used to it... I mean, I still overheat and shit. And I still am not the guy that you want to put in a 1v1. But uh, in terms of just charging around the map, killing things, and just being a little bit smart about like where you go... Holy shit, man. It's very easy. I don't know whether it's just because it's EU, but I'm sustaining Plat 3 constantly. Which never happens on NA. I never sustain solo queue as well. Like it's not it's not duo necessarily. There there is a guy I've been duoing with a bit, but my win rate doesn't change when I'm with him versus when I'm not. I could go pure random, and actually I think my win rate might be a little bit higher actually when I'm without him. Um, so, uh, but maybe it's just because it's end of season, so there's a bit more going around, and it's EU, so there's a bigger population. Um, but yeah, it's 80 games. 80 games. I'm at 80 out of 120 in like two days. Which is a lot. It, it really is a lot, guys. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's okay. Um, it'll be done. And then uh, then I get back to leveling and wow a little bit. Get the fire back for that. Finish that up. Then it'll be open world builds. So I don't think open world builds will be this week as it happens. Especially since the week has rolled on, obviously. Um, but I do want to get those going. Particularly, I mean, I kind of want to stall... Just because build templates, like when the templates come in, I kind of want the last three episodes to have those. But, I mean, we've had enough time to settle into new balance and stuff, so. Uh, hey, I just talked to you in Discord about joining the PvP thing. Is 1,400 fine, or am I too bad? Well, what's 1,400? So, you're, like, mid-gold. That's not very good at the game, but uh, you're welcome to come. You'll learn. Um, and ranked isn't 100% expressive of, um, uh, of, like, the tournament format and stuff. You, the thing is, you're gonna have to play a lot. If you, but you, if you don't get into the A team, you'll definitely be in the B team or whatever. So you could definitely, you could definitely come. I'm not turning white people away. You guys can come. Um, but if you want to, you need to join the Spud Club Discord. There's a link under every single video in the description for every video I ever do. Or, like, here on Twitch somewhere underneath. And then when you're in, I can give you a role to give you the um, the chat thing. Okay, you are in there. Well, I'll give you the role afterwards because obviously I'm streaming now. You've left it a bit late in the day. So I can't, you know, go do that now. But you will get in. I'll, I'll sort it out after the stream's over. You're trying to finish your chest in PvP? You haven't played much this season? Took my suggestion to play side node. Been playing Spellbreaker. Definitely winning more than you were. Thanks, WP. Well, I hope that you are, uh, you know, there's... When I say play a, a side noder, 
I don't just mean sit on a node all the time. You know, I, I, I do mean you want to do a little bit more than that, right? Uh, but as long as you're playing the role well, don't you? Uh, what are we doing? No, 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 no. We're not doing a tourney or anything today. Actually, sorry, guys. I, uh, I notice when I watch streams and people leave it on, like, that introductory thing, it's kind of annoying if it's on there too long. I don't even have a face cam, so I shouldn't leave that scrolling for too long. I've been fighting tech this whole time. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you guys some uh, volume. Ah, uh, it's probably a bit loud, isn't it? Ah, uh, maybe it's not. Maybe we're okay. Yeah, well, good, good, good. Glad to hear it. Uh, Sensivius, thanks very much for the Twitch Prime there, dude. I really appreciate it. Trying to be a little bit more positive at the moment. Um, I've got a message over on Wooden Potatoes 2 at the moment of a guy say who was watching us playing the Star of Ice Brood. And he said, sometimes you're really shitty to your chat. And you were shitty to the people you were playing with, right? And, like, I realized people constantly saying stuff like that to me all the time. People going out of their way to type in my comments and my Twitch chat and stuff. You're a shitty person. Hey, you, you're shitty. That makes me shitty. That makes me, like, annoyed at the audience. That makes me, you know, kick back. And I'm kind of in this weird thing where there's all these fucking wankers around. That, I don't know, they feel like they're offering nice uh, feedback that I don't give a fuck about. And it's just dragging me down. It's put me into a negative place. And then, and then, and then it's coming back, you know. So I'm just trying to be a little bit more positive. I don't know whether that means ignoring comments or, or what, but I'm going to be nice. I'm going to go a whole stream being nice. You guys ready for it? To be the person I want to be. If you had two hands available, you'd join me. What do you mean? You only have one hand? What's the story there? Born with or accident? Time for WP therapy. Yeah, we had the existential stream yesterday. <laughs> now we uh, do a therapy stream. Hey, have you got tips for a guy who never played Guild Wars 2 before? So yeah, if you go to Google, you can type Guild Wars 2. You'll come to the Guild Wars 2 official website. Uh, they'll have the option to get the client there. It's free. And then once you're in game, you can start playing. There's, your, there's my tip for you. You're great, not a wanker. Thank you, DJ Gaidan. If I didn't see through the, uh, uh, the shallow... Oh, fuck, what's the word? What's that amazing word? I think it begins with a P. And it basically means fob off. Platitude, that's it. Thank if I didn't see immediately through the shallow platitude there, I'd be very uh, thrilled with that. Alright. No tech chest. Uh, we got some recovered artifacts. Okay, so I'm going to drop squads. You guys can now join my new squads for the strike mission in Grothmar. So you guys are welcome to do that. Two recovered Shara artifacts. Nothing really going on there. Though we do have keys. Jesus, I've got five Ash Legion keys. Got five Ash Legion. Only one blood. But this does mean we can instantly open the vault, which is what I care about. I wonder whether the uh, Lockbreaker thing should offer these these keys. Right? Uh, machetes. Okay, goods. Uh, I know that the inventory's a mess, don't worry. You guys won't have to look at it for much longer. Karma's doing okay, up to a million again. And there's really not even that much karma to spend on the map. That's something I haven't really assessed just yet. But yeah, there's not too much to spend. Yeah, so you got, uh, type slash squad join list. That's my character name, three letters, L-Y-S. You can get in on the strike mission. It's a giant kill for you. Um, and it's got some rare shit in there. Worth like a lot of money, I think. But you can only do it once per day. I thought I recognized your name proper vented at me when you lost your plat rank. Oh, Benji, the call out. I uh I I have been extremely extremely toxic in PVP for for my normal standard the past 2 days. I have been genu I've been typing in chat constantly. I used the word pleb, which is everything like anyone who says the word pleb like I have a very, very, very low opinion of, and I really, uh, the, the, the idea of me using it, but I even used that word. I even used that, and I went out of my way, yes, last night, right, one of the last games I played last night, let me tell you a story. There was this rev on our team. Now, the guy I was duo queuing with last night, he seems pretty reasonable, he doesn't type much, he doesn't seem to, you know, 
I think, like most people in PvP, he's been banned at some point for verbal abuse. So he's probably been a wanker at some point. Possibly is still a wanker. Most of them are. But I haven't seen it, all right? He's been pretty chill and pretty whatever. But even he, in chat yesterday, was interacting with, like, some allied rev. And he, and I saw him, he went in chat, he said, oh my god, you are horrendous to this rev on our team. I had no idea, I had no conception of what the rev was doing. But seeing that, I was like, okay, this is kind of weird. About three minutes later, as the game's in progress, the rev dies or something, I don't know. Again, I'm not interacting with him. And he, uh, he blows up in team chat, the revenant blows up in team chat. About how everyone's trying to throw the game because, yeah, you guessed it, they're not aren't fighting on the nodes. They're not fighting on point. Oh my god, you guys. Why are you fighting over there? Get on the node. What are you doing? The node. You guys are trying so hard to lose. He typed genuinely about 15 messages. Uh, all about how like everyone was throwing the game. And then he capped it off by saying, I'm just going to go AFK then. I'm just going to go AFK. And no one had like even typed to him since, you know, my, my, uh, my duo previously. So, uh... Let me turn this into a raid squad. Does this matter? I, I, I guess it doesn't. So anyway, then he goes AFK. This rev goes AFK. Um, uh, and we all, we lose the game. It was an easy win, by the way. It was an easy win. We were like 300 points up. Then he does this and we lose the game. It was a, a Coliseum game. The rev loses it. And, uh, and so I... Like I said, this is a story about me being toxic. Afterwards, I actually went so far... As to mail the Revenant. And I typed a whole paragraph out to the Revenant. Talking about how irrelevant nodes are. And how he's... And I was... I, I, I said, look, no salt, no anger, none of this. Look, nodes aren't that important. You, you're, you're, you're playing a Revenant. You know, you, you really should be pressuring for the fights. You shouldn't just stand there letting your, your ally get 2 v one under your nose. You should move. You should be rotating around and killing things. That's the top priority. You won't find any top players that tell you to sit on a, a Revenant on a node like you are. It's not like he was a shield fucking herald, you know, trying to play tanky, right? He was the standard fucking sword sword, blah, 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 blah. And I said, look, you won't find anyone. I did this whole thing. And then I, and I tried to make it sound really nice. And then I just ended with a sentence. Mark my words. You are a horrendous Guild Wars 2 player. I went out of my way to mail this guy. And I wanted him to think that I was being as sincere and nice as possible. And as factually and calmly as possible. To just let him know that he is horrendous and should feel bad about himself. That's how toxic I was. I mean, I wasn't like screaming in all, ch all caps and, you know, swearing and stuff. But I did try to... I really tried to get under his skin with the mail I sent. And then he sent like some like ridiculous mail back with like, you know... No punctuation, just, oh, no F off, blah, 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 blah. KYS, get the rope and ladder, all that kind of nonsense. It's like, what? And it's just a little moment where I'm like, I should be more mature than that. Because there's no point typing. There's actually no point. There really isn't. Because the kind of people you're trying to appeal to are often very, very, very young. Anyway, so, um, uh, so yeah, I, uh, I, I was pretty toxic. You have wanted to do that, WP? I mean, there's something really stupid and really immature and really dumb about going out of your way to mail someone. I mean, I get it all the time because I, I play offline. So everyone gets this impression that I've blocked them or whatever. And if they try to type random whisper shit to me, 99% of the time I'm playing off appearing offline. So they just get a blah, blah, blah is offline. And then a proportion of those will then mail me. And they're always like the most insane like idiots that go out of their way to mail so you know I, i've i've never really felt the compunction to do that but i did it i did it i did it within the past 24 hours great shame has befallen on me do you want to six man the strike mission looks like eu isn't very interested in it today what's going on eu but yeah in general the queues have been going well you know i'm happy to spam queues and sustain it about this level this is actually almost top 25 at the moment which i never got that title last season so you never know. Spending like two thirds of the season hiding as legend on NA, and then if I can squeeze out a top 25 on EU at the end, um, I'd be pretty happy with this season. I'd say that's pretty good. On different classes too. Yes, yeah, this realizing I'm often playing probably with much younger players strikes me from time to time. It's also a little depressing at times for what you can do. Yeah, I mean, I agree, Ailes. I can. I feel like a very much a kindred spirit to you there. I mean, I don't really, I don't really mind. I don't think that someone's worse just because they're younger or something like that. But it is often like, 
I don't know. It's just a realisation that some people just... It's not even that people are young. It's just that people don't give a fuck about learning. They don't give a fuck about how they compose them. Like, literally, they don't care, like, even remotely. Like, they have absolutely no social skills or, like, you know, understanding or respect for their surroundings. And it's because they're young. It's because they're all, all, all complete fucking losers, right? And in either situation, it's like... It's not your job to be their dad. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's not your job, so... Just let them eventually grow up. Because it's not going to go through. Like, when you literally don't care. It's not going to go through. So there's no point. He means not that he is old, but they are young. I mean, if I'm going on about young'uns, that makes me sound pretty old, doesn't it? I admit. The immaturity gets you let down, Ailes. Well, I don't know. It doesn't let me down, though, because I just think that's what a lot of kids are like, you know? Especially the kind of shut-ins that would be playing a game like Guild Wars, you know, instead of out drinking and whatever. <laughs> I mean, that's the, the honest. That's the truth. <laughs> We've all been a loser at some point. Yeah, and that's true, too. Yeah, exactly. That's true as well. I feel attacked. <laughs> no, I said I wasn't going to attack chat. I'm not attacking chat today. I'm not attacking. You, I'm just bouncing off of you guys. That's all I'm doing. I'm just about, you know, it's just, it's just whatever. Going out drinking makes you a better person. It makes you a more fucking social person. Definitely. It teaches you basic manners and uh, what's the word? Um, fuck. It, it, it confirms you have a theory of mind. And you have some sense of social responsibility. It does do at least that. I mean, unless you're drinking alone at a bar. But how many, like, young people do that? That's more like old people. I remember one of my first jobs. There were a bunch of old people that were working there, right? And I remember going out clubbing one night. And I looked. I, I'm not joking. This is not like, I'm not exaggerating or painting a story. I looked in the dark corner of the club. And I saw a bunch of... I'm just going to use the word old. I won't give a specific age because that, you know, someone will be the age. and the, But people who were well past it, sh well past it, kind of grotty looking as well. Clearly lonely men sitting in a corner of this club, like eyeballing all us, you know, 18, 19, 20, 21. I remember that really clearly. I remember thinking, fuck. And I remember, like, judging it a little bit, but I actually just feel really bad about that story because it's, like, it's so easy to be that guy, I guess, right? Like, the kind of... And I really do feel a lot of empathy for them in that situation. They must be so lonely, you know? It must be like, fuck, how do I find a woman? How do I find someone to spend my life with? How do I date? I don't know how to date. How do I do it? Do I go to a club? And then they sit there, like, alone, like, oh, my God. It's, I, it's burned into my memory, that image of those guys. And then you see him later at work. This was where... Well, I won't say where I was working. What EU server do I play on? Uh, it changes all the time because I just region swap. Right now, I'm on El Elona Reach. I'm on a German server at the moment. Man, our frames are really shitting themselves here. Right, let's go open the vault, do the JP. And then that's pretty much Grothmar I'm, I'm pretty clean with uh, at this point. We might get the shootout thing done because there's only three more that we need... Uh, four more. We hadn't done so badly. Didn't I do an event the other day where we only got like one but, and then we got a bronze reward? Do you remember that? We would have the achievement already, but it's fine. It's not a big deal. Let's just go do the cabin of the Kano first. Can you stop please telling me my future? No, I think there is a real thing there. I think, um, I think any of us could embody any future, you know, and, uh, it's scary to see how little support there is for a certain kind of blue collar man in the world, I think. I probably mentioned this on a stream quite recently, so I'm going to seem obsessed with the fact now. But I was learning uh, maybe a month ago or so that like the highest suicide rates in a lot of Western developed nations are middle-aged males. They're the they're the highest suicide rates. There's a lot of like posturing and um, uh, uh, threatening of suicide and stuff and failed suicide from women, but like full-on successful suicides just kind of happens like the rates are really really high for middle-aged men and uh 
I don't know. I wonder if it's kind of just a broad trend in society to just kind of ignore male problems. I think that that is a thing, right? Like, blokes don't really have issues. You don't really have emotional emotions. Not really. You don't, you don't go to people for support. Right? You, you don't go to the therapist. You, you don't go to your girlfriend. You don't go to your wife. She wouldn't offer it to you anyway, you know? Because what? He has problems, you know, and obviously I'm being very exaggerated here, but there's like a, a subtle kind of undertone to a lot of interactions for men with that, I think. I might be wrong. But, uh, and I think over time and over broad enough averages, eventually you see an impact of that. So, yeah, you know, I just, I, I think back to that. I think back to those guys at that club and I just think, oh man, poor fuckers. Cringy, but pa poor fuckers. There's a brilliant subreddit that is exactly for this. There is no word in the English language for this phenomenon. But that idea of sad cringe, like you feel really bad, but also you're cringing a lot kind of thing. Sad cringe. It's like a kind of a specific emotion. I love all things cringe, <laughs> generally. Uh, yeah, our sad cringe will show you a lot of that stuff. Where, you know, it's just a bit of a bummer. Everything's a bit of a bummer about what you're looking at. That you're like, oh, fuck. That's a bummer. <laughs> like, that kind of experience. It's a good one. Wait, what's this? We need to talk about male suicide. I, Steph, Slack. Not a perfect one, but it's good enough to spark some... Thoughts. I don't understand. Are you quoting a person or? Right, so that's the vault, and then the JP is just over here. Someone I know had a birthday yesterday and went on their own. Made me sad that I couldn't go help. Yeah, it's stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of. Well, no, no, I don't even cringe at that. I just feel bad. I just feel really bad. If someone has to go to their own birthday party. I mean, I do cringe a bit because if I. I mean, I've been in that place where I've been like, okay, it's my birthday. Am I, am I going to do a party? And then I think, well, no, no one would reasonably come. Everyone's busy. Or the people I care about are busy. It's kind of done. I, I, I won't do it, you know. So I won't do the party. But the idea of going through anyway, even though no one's going to... I guess it's that thing of nobody wants to be like a reject, right? So that, that sense of inviting people and they say they'll come and then they don't. I did that to someone once as well, and I still feel very bad about it. It was a guy I knew at a place. This is a different job. A guy my age that I knew where I was working. This is a really embarrassing, fucked up story of mine, I, I feel like. I feel like a horrible person, right? Uh, and we knew it. We liked each other a lot. We would, you know, we, we'd work together, but we'd also, when it came to lunch, or, you know, and if it was like a, there was a particularly big break or whatever, and we're not even at work, you know, we'd be out, we'd, you know, we'd go downtown to restaurants together we'd you know we, we do all kinds of stuff but we were workmates anyway yeah he invited me to uh to his birthday party and uh and i said i'd try my best to make it i, I never 100 percent confirmed i was gonna do it but he was very very insistent that i come he was very insistent that i come and uh and i didn't i i i gave him a big enough impression that i would and i didn't and i feel really bad about it still and i remember i didn't see him it was like when work had stopped for a bit, and uh, he was like, "Oh yeah, you should come over. You should you, you should come over to my place. We should uh, do this thing." Uh, and uh, I sort of gave him the impression that that I might if ish, uh, and then I didn't, and then I like hid from him because I was so embarrassed about it, and still am. I'm still embarrassed. I'm still cringing about it. Years later, he probably doesn't even remember. He might not even remember me at this point because that was only a short-lived thing we were doing. And then. Um, and then when I finally did see him a few months later, he was really off with me. And I could tell that he'd been upset at that point. And he, and he was still annoyed with me. He was very off with me. He was very much like, oh, well, fuck you. Okay, then I, I, saw, I get where it is. I'm not a priority to you. Fine, that's it then. I remember that. Ah, oh, sad times. Anyone else? Anyone else got a story like that? WP always promising shit and never delivering. Come on, man. That's fucking... It's not true. You don't do big social gatherings, even for stuff like birthdays and stuff? I can't even remember why I didn't go. I did care to go. I can't remember why I didn't. A part of me, I do remember thinking... 
I think he just moved into his place. Maybe it was one of those situations. See, I had a situation as well where I was working in another, like, uh, another city. And uh, everyone was so friendly. Like, a bit of advice to anyone. Based on my experience, if you get a really good job, op job opportunity but it's another city and you don't like the idea of starting over and having to make all new friends and all that kind of shit and get to know that place. Oh, my God. I put out the torch even though it was... Ah. Uh, if you you should do it anyway, because I, I took an opportunity like that and everyone was so ridiculously friendly Not just to me, but everyone else in a similar posi position Just like everyone knew as ad as adults We were all in this boat of like okay A lot of people are starting their lives again kind of thing or you know There's a big start but we want friends. We want to know each other So the number of like social gatherings and things you get invited to in those like first few months is crazy because everyone's like, well, look, let's fucking put a big... And I, I always found that people were very tolerant and very outgoing and very considerate. I mean, if you're super introverted and you don't want to do any of that stuff, which to some degree I, I certainly am, uh, then maybe that didn't factor into your decision to move away anyway in the first place. But uh, yeah, I found people were like that. And maybe this guy in the story I was talking about was in a similar position. Because I think he just moved in and then maybe I was like one of the only people that he'd kind of clicked with at the time and... And then, like, I just always think, what if he'd had his party and no one showed up? What if he'd had it and absolutely no one was there? Fuck! Oh, why? Stop me talking about this, because I can't do the jumping puzzle. Turtle Moji's got a story. Yeah, we've all let down someone at some point, and it messes me up. I try hard not to give people false impressions because things like that happening. Sometimes I feel like I'm too straightforward with people and they don't take it well. You can't have the best of both worlds. Yeah, I mean, people are pushy. That's the thing as well. People are very, very pushy. It's, it's hard to say no unless you're, like, fucking brutal. I'm pretty curt on the internet. But IRL, I'm a bit... I'm a bit, bit of a softy. I find it very hard to say no. Get roped in and sort of curtailed into these things. I mean, in certain situations. That's not enough of a story, though. Let's have a real example from someone. And while I wait for that, I'm actually going to do the fucking jumps. We don't have Kato here today, it seems. To create convenient little portals ahead of us. Or maybe we do, and I've just not noticed. We do have some people in the squad, after all. Come on! What the f... There we go. Oh, my God. I've just blitzed through this every other day. Okay, the problem here was that I was trying to climb around on those, thinking we were in the next section, when in fact we're just here. When's the liquor tasting stream? Once upon a time, and I really can describe it like that now, because it was a long time ago, uh, a bunch of donations came in. Fuck, I need to start re- Oh, I gotta sort stuff out, because I haven't read or seen myself get a donation for about two months, maybe. Which is really- Oh, come on! Uh, maybe I shouldn't be playing. Maybe I need to take a break because I've been playing too much and now just my fingers are going all over the place. Um, this is a huge checkpoint as well. Uh, what was I just gonna, what was I saying? Oh yeah, people sent a ton of donations and then we bought like 150 quid of whiskey and we did that on the stream. But uh, that was ages ago now. So that's kind of happened. Today you didn't go to your sister's hockey match. You live in Bristol, her in Wales, and the match was in Bristol. Wait, you live in Bristol. So how is that the reason? Fuck, it's really hard to read chat and do precise jumps. Who would have thought it? I remember on that stream and how you told us about the Balthazar leaks on your video's comments and the leaks ended up being right. Oh, did I talk about that on that video? Oh, I think I did. Yeah, I think I did. Yeah, I think I did because I wasn't sure. There was something that was iffy about it to me. The whole scenario seemed a bit iffy and I didn't know whether it was something I should be talking about in public. And then obviously I got a bit, bit tipsy because we sampled what, like six different brands of whiskey. Um, at least they've added this way up. And are you fucking serious? Uh, and uh, and I talked about it, and then I, and in the moment, I think while I was talking about it, I was saying, I wonder if I should be talking about it. 
do remember that. That was ages ago, and I remember a very precise moment of that one stream there. Oh, come on. Why is every single little bit of movement so challenging right now? Did you see that? Did you see just trying to do a simple jump up that tree and how I fucking slid back against it like three separate times? Like, why am I falling off that there? Everything about it just seems like really irritating and weird and like overly. This is a huge leg. Okay, finally. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, dish soap. Yeah, that's a good description. I remember the devs describing um, in Guild Wars 2 at launch when you were swimming and you went near the edge of a coast. If you tried to get up onto land but missed, thus you were still in the water, you would like really violently sink down super low sliding across the cliff face that you were trying to get over as you did so do you guys remember that like you would just like plummet really hard underwater uh and i remember the devs discussing that phenomenon and describing it as dish soap i didn't have a patch note where they said are you f <sighs> all right we'll go back uh they had a patch note where they said dish soap no longer lines the Tyrian coast or something like that <clears throat> yeah, that's kind of a weird little thing. No, I, f I think, you know the whole vanilla Guild Wars 2 idea, right? Or v Guild Wars 2 Classic or whatever. I think it would be really good to do. Not because it would be a good game, but it would just instantly remind and teach people of all the, like, rubbish stuff about launch. Like, and it would really bring into f perspective and focus for people just how much better the game is now. Like, in terms of just baseline gameplay experience especially so after the build template stuff comes out you know to go back to a world with no wardrobe and all that stuff the only thing that would be better is a, is power creep be a little bit different the pace of pvp matches would probably be a little bit better that would be it and world versus world would probably be a bit, bit uh be a bit better i mean community understanding of strats and siege and shit would kind of deny you a lot of that other stuff but I mean, and the economy reset would be nice, okay? And the leveling reset, as far as world versus world, would be nice. But uh, all the rest, it would just be awful. You'd lose all the good PvP infrastructure. You'd lose, you'd lose so much going back. There's just no reason to do it, and it's not early enough to have really good design differences with the game. Like now, a Guild Wars 2 classic that is based on the alphas. Now that I would, I would, would be incredible. That would be the ultimate game. If they re-released Guild Wars 2, but with a ton of the alpha mechanics stuck to, you know, they stick to their guns this time. And uh, so you open with, like, the Codex, the Bestiary, the uh, the energy um, uh, potions, all that kind of shit, right? And uh, and some of the early design of the really long uh, skill cooldowns, shit like that. They build the whole game with a lot of that alpha stuff, right? And the old system for what the uh, marks were, you remember? Like, uh, that type of item in the game the upgrade component that you basically never use if that was expanded into a full guild wars 2 then that would be really worthwhile yeah and and if they head off some of the problems like you know the uh the leveling up from crafting being too lucrative the leveling up from unfogging being too lucrative leveling up in general being a little bit too quick um uh exotics undermining uh, the rarity of other exotics because you're getting them from map completion shit like that if they iron that stuff out That could be a very viable Guild Wars 2 classic But at that that I'm talking about there is not a game any of you have ever played I've played well Maybe some of you tell me in chat. Did you guys ever play the convention demos? Did anyone do that? I I did but even when I got to a convention demo It was late enough in the day that energy wasn't in the game anymore I was playing a convention demo in Snowden at Gamescom 2010. You can see I've got a VOD about it, I think. No, not 2010. 2011 is when I got to it. Gamescom 2011. And um, and by then, they'd already got rid of a lot of the really good alpha stuff. And the game was taking shape to be what it was at Vanilla.
Well, Turtle Moji, Turtle Moji in chat says, and the energy mechanic with that yellow bar above the utilities. That wasn't a different mechanic. That was just a different user interface for what we already have. This bar here, it's just, it wasn't curved over the orb. It was here. It's the same thing, though. Energy at that point was just energy as you know it now. There's no difference. The, um... The, uh, but yeah, you're right. That was an earlier alpha thing. The actual energy, this is endurance. It's not energy. The energy mechanic predates even that. Yeah, there were only two conventions, I think, that were demoing that. The first games come and the first packs. You rejected Guild Wars 1 when it came out as Total Man. Now you want to kick yourself in the face? Well, I hope they have a really good video for you on that topic very soon. Okay, all right. So we're done with Grothmar. Let's do our races now. The old stamina bar only changed in beta weekend event two or so. No, no, no. Oh, you mean the UI? Yeah, I think the yellow stamina bar, the le yellow endurance bar, that made it through most of the demos uh, and into the press beta. I actually have footage. Do I still have it? Okay, so I don't know how many of you are in chat or, or watching from when I very first picked up Twitch. Jerry is a very long-term sub. Is Jerry in chat right now? Does Jerry remember this? Jerry might be the only one. But when I very first started streaming, I opened up my streams. Uh, or did I close them? I think I closed all of my streams. I didn't host people or anything like that or just stop streaming, which is what I do now. I closed my streams with old videos. So my thinking was it was like, um, you know, I get this big community, this big chat room going on each stream. And then people can stick around and watch with a live chat now a video that's a few years old. And they may, they've may probably never seen. But it's still me and it's still Guild Wars and it's still valid. But they would never think to seek it out. But now they have a community to, uh, to actually enjoy it together. So, you know, you breathe new life into that content, basically. It's like a TV rerun, but there's the value add is now you've got other people you're watching it with. And I would be in chat watching it too. So I, I did that with like my Let's Plays and stuff like that. But I also did on a lot of my streams um, uh, content that had never been anywhere before. But I'd made at some point in the past. So I, on some of those streams, here's Jerry. Jerry joined in August 2015. I don't know when I started streaming. Uh, Jerry, you'd have to tell me if you remember this. But uh, yeah, one of the one of the s things I did was... I have a whole Let's Play from the press... Have I ever put that on YouTube? From the press alpha that not everyone had access to. But I was in. I was in the press alpha. I wasn't actually in it as a part of press, by the way. Um, but I was in that. And I did like a, 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 a video series where I played a ranger. Uh, and that had the endurance, the, uh, the, the the long bar endurance. So that one made it a long time. I have other shit as well. I have footage of uh, like 100 loopies attacking uh, Queensdale. I don't know whether I showed that on a, one of the streams. But that was like when the devs f f rounded out their like internal stuff right before the game launched. And before the main betas began. They capped it off with a big event with a ton of loop. And they just spawned loads of loopies all over uh, Queensdale. And I'm pretty sure I showed that. And if I haven't showed that, it's sitting around on some data drive somewhere. Um, another another thing from that version of Guild Wars Classic would be uh, the old trait system, where it's a bit lot, a bit more like Final Fantasy VII material or whatever. You'd have direct attribute point spending as you level up. You got attributes, you put them in. The attributes panel was a little bit more like Diablo. The UI was substantially different. I mean, I got a video on the, that area of, era of Guild Wars 2. Okay, so what do we want to do for Master that isn't Grothmar just to shake things up a little bit? Well, no, I want Prolific Popper. Let's get Prolific Popper. It might end up a Grothmar stream. I don't know. You remember my Guild Wars 2 daily videos with commentary over the videos of beta gameplays? Yeah, I mean, I, lo I remember that as well. Do you know what I would love? I would love... One of the main things that excites me about, you, you know, I don't actually think it's a great idea or there's like lots of sides to it, right? 
I'm mixed on the idea of a Guild Wars 3. But one of the big things I would love to be doing, and I can imagine myself doing, is Guild Wars 3 daily. Can you imagine that? Just hearing that out loud to me is very weird. Guild Wars 3 daily. So it'd be like, you know, for half a year, you'd get a daily video from me every day. And it would just be some shitty little Q&A or whatever, but... Which is what it used to be. But people loved that, you know. To have a place every day to go sit around. Have these good conversations. And it would be kind of a nice reset point as well. Because, like, the thing is... I've spent so long now talking about Guild Wars 2 for so many years. Like, 99% of it I've already talked about somewhere at some point along the line. So I feel very deflated when I'm, like going in circles and it's like the same controversy just repackaged with a different wrapping or it's the you know the same area of law someone wants me to because you know it's like on youtube aside from like the new information the devs do i don't actually do a lot of like theory videos and shit because it's all i've done it all you know i'm not really that interested in going over and over and over for the sake of someone who's only just joined but if there was a Guild Wars 3 thing, it'd be like a big reset point. And it just everything would be on the table again, you know. Everything. I could treat my audience like complete noobs. And it wouldn't matter if I'm repeating myself. Because now it's in the context of a whole new game, you know. And, they, and now you've got all the information from the original Guild Wars 2 daily. And all the new stuff that we learned as Guild Wars 2 itself was going along. Did I ever get the gin tonic? No, I did not. I did not get the gin tonic. Uh, I think the shooting uh, uh, thing should be up soon. I'm just going to sit there for a second. Seems to me you have some effect where in the middle of where you are facing, everything seems more distant. On the edges, they seem closer. Yes, um, you're talking about like long distance views, right? Like how you can see a bit of a mountain just on the left here. At the very left where my cursor is. And then when I try to look directly at it, it goes away. Someone explained that to me when I noticed it, when I first started messing with fog. Uh, give me one second, guys. So, it was explained to me... Sorry, I just had to be up for a second. It was explained to me... Um... That your... Your viewport... Is actually like a, a sphere or something I can't remember what was it it was something really really simple about the way that we the, the, the render that the camera is rendered but it's not entirely intuitive you've got to think for a second but it makes a lot of sense when it's illustrated before you Are you seeing a square rather than a circle? So you can see further than the diagonal? Yeah, maybe that's what it was. Yeah, maybe it's the, it's a square and not a circle. Like, you expect it to be a circle, but it's actually a square, which is why in the corner... Oh, when I look directly at this, it disappears. But when I look over here, my view distance is further in the corners. Something like that, I can't remember. Someone who knows will explain. But that, that honestly, that's like, that's not even popping. Really? But that's the ugliest thing about... Playing low fog. Alright, let's pick a platform. Let's be a hipster and go to the one no one else is at. Uh, if you could say the direction of Guild Wars 2 in one sentence, what would you say? What do you mean the direction of Guild Wars 2? What is in... Is it good? Is it bad? Has it conformed to its remit? Has it pushed new boundaries? What, what, what are you asking me? direction of Guild Wars 2. Is that a cleverly disguised, disguised what's the population of this game? Is Guild Wars 2 dead? Is that a cleverly disguised is Guild Wars 2 dead question? Is that what that is? Like the state of the game? It's in a good place. I think it's a game that um bit off more than it could chew. Uh, considering all the formats it, it provided. And then when it inevitably couldn't sustain all of those formats. 
it, it, it's left a lot of players burned because of their expectations of those other formats. But it, here's something I do believe. So, like, I can understand a pvp -er being raging at the game and not wanting to play anymore. Because there's no lands, there's no whatever. I can imagine a world versus world -er being mad and not wanting to play the game anymore. I can imagine a raider being mad and not wanting to play the game. To be honest, if you're a raider in Guild Wars, you're kind of a fucking, you know, you waited years for just any kind of thing. The devs went full on with it and the rest of the community rebelled and then they stopped, you know. If, you, if you're if you a raider, I don't know how you got into Guild Wars 2 in the first place, to be honest. But, uh, well, I, I do actually, I do. Anyway, that's a whole different topic. Look, there are, there are facets of the game that, if, that weren't catered to. And I can understand how then you end up leaving. And you get all these strong opinions. Because what you thought the game was going to be, it ended up not being. So therefore you call it bad. But that mindset doesn't actually speak of what the devs are doing. The bit that's in there. So I think that um, if we think of a theoretical new... Imagine one human being. Okay, he's exactly the same person. He has the same genes, the same life experience, the same everything. He is the same guy, okay? One of them comes into Guild Wars 2 in 2013, plays it, hears about World vs. World, gets super into World vs. World, and then last year he quits, and he's now mad at the game because he's like, World vs. World Alliance isn't taking too long, blah, 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 blah. He's got all these opinions now, all these thoughts and feelings about World vs. World. He immersed himself fully in World vs. World. He doesn't give a shit about anything else. Now, the, let's take that same person again. And instead, let's put him in the game right now, today, 2019. He doesn't ever get into World vs. World because it's not a support, big, large supported area of the game. And, you know, word of mouth is that it's rubbish, blah, blah, blah. I'm not saying he's justified in that opinion but, and so on. Or there has to be that way. But th he never gets into it. Instead, he's just playing Living World. And he's like, well, fuck, there's loads of Living World. And he's actually... that that His expectations never shift. He's never encouraged to believe there will ever be anything other than just Living World. And so he spends his time finding out what's good about this and what he enjoys about it. And maybe in this world, on the average, he does have less fun than his world versus world counterpart did. Because maybe he, as a person with his genes and his life experience, was a person that is just a bit more suited to world versus world. Maybe on the average, he does have a little bit less fun. But he never like gets into this like vitriolic, like sad, sour state with the game. And he's happy to keep playing it. And, he, and and so you take that same guy and you ask guy A and guy B, is Guild Wars 2 a good good game? Guy A says, no, it's a terrible game, it's shit. Guy B sees it for what it is and has never been led astray. And he says, no, it's a good game, I like it, yeah. I play it for this, this and this and I'm being catered to. So I think that there is something to be said for that. There's, there's very much like, I think one of Guild Wars 2's biggest issues always has been expectations and community like orienting and focus. I think that's been a, a big, big thing. And if you're not a person that, like, will see the fullness of it, then there will come a day where your bit's not being done and then you, you rage at it or whatever. So that's what I think. Uh, to put it another way, I think despite Ar Arena Nets and Guild Wars 2's failures to cater to large swathes of what it was going for, despite its failures in those arenas, that doesn't stop anyone new from coming in. Even someone who would have liked World vs. World more and would have rather that they focused on that, probably wouldn't be as toxically minded about the game as a burned World vs. World would be. Do you get what I'm saying? Their failures in all these other areas don't necessarily make it a game you can't recommend to people. Unless your entire existence is about, for some ungodly reason, tryharding in raids. Uh, in which case, you know, you're going to be told to go to one of the top, the, 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 the top raiding MMOs. Probably WoW. I think WoW is probably the best raiding MMO, right? Or at least maybe that was true around Kata or something. Because uh, didn't they get to a point where they were doing all the main story? Like, the main story would finish in a raid. It's like, they wholly baked it into the game. It was like, no, the game is get doing these. Like, and they didn't give a fuck about, like...
yeah, the new player does not experience the, the years of disappointment. Yeah, yeah, for example, yeah. That's like a fundamental experience that they get to skip. It should, uh, 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 more precisely as well, something I'm trying to explain is Guild Wars may have found its feet now. Since season, since the end of season three, since mid season three, actually, fuck it. Since mid season three, since like Lake, Do uh, since um, uh, Bitter Frost Frontier came out, I would say Guild Wars pretty much found its feet with what kind of content it wanted to do, what pace it wanted to put it in, what formats it wanted to support and how regularly, how it wanted to do balance. Actually, they, they were still finding their feet with balance, I think, until even more recently than that. But I reckon that Guild Wars found its p feet around bit of, uh, around Bitter Frost Frontier. I don't think they've deviated from, like, their thing, really, in terms of, like, the priority game type and Moneymaker is Living Worlds. And most of the patches and development efforts go into Living World and new maps and this, this, and this. And then, uh, I mean, the expansion thing is, is another, you know, maybe they didn't find their feet for that. But in terms of, like, what game mode they want to focus on, what does an expansion look like, right? Well, it looks like a lot of PvE. It doesn't look like a lot of World versus World. It doesn't look like a lot of PvP. It looks like a lot of PvE. Yeah. I mean, you can argue that Elite Specs are those are, is our content for those other modes. So maybe you could definitely say that. There's already four people finished, so I am not going to get anything from doing this. This was not worthwhile. Anyway, yeah, so I would say that people who came after that, people came after Bit of Frost Frontier, and any time from there, they've always had a clear sense of what's going on with the game, and know whether they like what's going on with the game. rest of them are probably just in denial. Um, I think I'm done. I, th I think I'm done with this. Is there anything else we're close to doing? Let's get a few more Devourinists. We get four more Devourinists. Let's do that. Oh, we got to get out of Grothmar, guys. We got to get out of Grothmar. We got to do something else in these streams. I should have put more prep in. I'm thinking more about the PvP meetup we're going to do soon. Look at this. 250 games, pretty much. 250, and then we're there. Considering I'm about to get 120 in just a couple of games. Uh, a couple of days. 250 for the big 10k does not seem far off. Oh, we can do Casimir's event as well. You did a review of HOT. Did you do a review of POF or some sort of state of the game? No, I haven't done a POF review or a state of the game review. Uh, in recent years right now would be the time to do a big POF review, but I feel like I'm not enthusiastic about doing it at all right and I'm wondering to myself why I'm not enthusiastic about doing it Now I, I will Happily let you guys know I had been working on the heart of thorns review kind of on and off those who were watching my streams during the Heart of Thorns era will know that. That I've been, like, writing in them a bit, a bit here, a bit there. But I, I was kind of putting the project down a lot. I kind of, like, wasn't working. I was losing enthusiasm. And then, when I heard POF was coming out, I got really enthusiastic about doing the HOT review. And I picked it up big time. And, in fact, I, I wrote good chunks of the uh, Guild episodes. You know the, the Guild Hall reviews? There's two of them. Uh, those episodes are really weighty as well. They're very big. I had a lot of thoughts that I wrote down on those. Good chunks of those. I think it was those two. Were actually written on an aeroplane. As I was, you know, because I, I, I did the, the post-show stuff uh, for POF, right? Like, So there's something about a new expansion that instilled in me a lot of excitement to review the previous one. And so right now I don't really have any excitement to review POF. I kind of don't feel like it's an error worth noting or something. So I wonder whether it's because there's no new X back. I wonder whether it's that. I wonder if it's that, like it or not, ArenaNet just hasn't convinced me that Icebrood Saga is like a new phase for Guild Wars. They've just not done that. You've got to give me a new character select. You've got to give me a new background. You've got to give me some like substantive fucking like mechanics or something. 
Give me a new race or give, give me anything. But start putting elite specs in with episodes. Make it feel like a new era. Otherwise, it's not a new era, right? I don't care if you rename it from a season to a saga. You haven't done enough. So I just, I don't have it there, you know? I want to have it there. I really do. But I don't. So I think that's somewhat inhibiting my desire to do a period. Like, if I knew we were really going into a new phase, and we've already got, like, one foot in the phase now, right? The new phase is, like, kind of here. If I felt really like we were walking through the doorway, then, yeah, I'd turn around and I'd assess the room that I've just left. And I think I'd be excited to, but for now, I'm not. I'm just not. So, yeah. Jerry says, give the, the era hasn't started yet. Give it a chance. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I, like I said, I want to. I'm giving it a chance. The point is that I'm being asked now. Why don't I do a review now? And we are kind of, you know, we're in the prologue now. We're in the section. Is the time not right? Well, the time might be right, but I'm not convinced yet. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying I'll never be convinced. I'm well aware that more stuff's coming. All right? <laughs> I'm keenly aware of that. And I'd like to take every opportunity I can for them to, to do that. But for now, that's why I've not done a review. Jerry says no POF hasn't finished. Do you like the idea that the colors means we're still POF? Yeah, he just said the banner color. I hope they look. Yeah, I mean this is the thing. They they need to like recolor this next patch or something. I don't know. Normally, I don't really like the idea of holding off features and shit. But I really wonder if they held off build templates to be released in conjunction with season one and they get did the whole hog for ice brood saga in terms of all that other stuff the launch and the, the character select and stuff just really put all that shit in there would it kind of feel expansiony because it's like oh look we're getting build templates and uh, would it would it i don't mean i don't know it's all arbitrary at the end of the day it is all arbitrary but there's something to be said for like getting those uh finer points of flavor done right I haven't paid for it, so it doesn't feel well. Uh, the, the paying for it doesn't mean anything to me. Nice. So we got daily done. I hadn't even been thinking about that. I hadn't even been thinking about the fact that I probably should do the daily. So that's just like the Casmir event. That was really valuable for us, actually, because we get the Casmir... Uh, uh, credit, and we get the, uh, the daily thing. Build templates are a money pit. Show me the money pit. Wonder what new currency we'll be farming in the new era. So far, it's volatile magic. Yeah, like, that's another nice little thing that's similar. No, this is a great patch. Don't get me wrong. This is a great patch. And the idea they call it prologue, but it's clearly like a full-on fucking big dick living world episode. It's a great first foot. They've got a great first foot. I mean, this isn't even really POF, right? Because there is no such thing as POF content really anymore. I mean, in terms of like timelines and when shit comes out, you can say that. But like, they rolled POF and HOT into the same price. So this is like, you know, kind of both. You didn't see a lot of fire after Balthazar, a lot of purple though. What? Why are you saying that? Is somebody suggesting that the banner should be red? I mean, I know it's got fire in the title, but yeah, it was really... Kraukatoric is kind of the bigger influence over the whole thing. Game needs more currencies with confusingly similar names. Yeah, I, I, I say that as well, actually. I don't really like that we have volatile magic and unstable magic. If you ask me right now, which is the which is season three and which is season four? Go and ask yourselves that. Don't look at chat because everyone's going to instantly start typing it in chat. But just think to yourself, which is volatile, which is unstable? I think 
things are supposed to be in a more extreme scenario in next season, right? In season four. So, what sounds worse? Unstable or volatile? Volatile sounds... So, I'm going to guess that volatile is season four. And that unstable is season three. Let's have a look. Volatile magic is here. And I think this is the... And, oh, it's Unbound. See, I didn't even fucking know the name. I didn't even know the name. It's Unbound. Yeah, all right. So there you go. But I did get guess it right. The Volatile is the newest, the newer one. Yeah, so there you go. It does. You're vindicated. That does confirm the point. We'll get Purified Magic. I'll get, I think that's a good chance. It's either purified or prismatic magic. Uh, prismatic magic doesn't really work. Purified is a good, good, good idea. For like following Aureen as she's gone and done all that, maybe. Unstable would be next. If they do unstable next, that would be hilarious. <laughs> Can you imagine? Unbound, volatile, unstable. Which is which, guys? I'll be fucked if I know. A few, you know, months in. Yeah, they should definitely not do a word with un in front. That would be very bad. Or, like, I guess another bad one would be, like, violent music. Uh, music? Violent magic. That would be not a very good one. Unhinged. Yeah, unhinged would be bad. Unicorn music. <laughs> music? Why do I keep saying music? What the hell? I'm, I must be tired. I feel a bit tired. What, what's going on? Heavy eyes. Wonky, unidentified. How have I not got the devourer thing? I was so close there. Did it ding already, maybe? And I just missed it? Are we picking up Aureen's magic drop-ins? I mean, I don't know what Aureen, what role Aureen will have in the story this season. They'll call it the saga music. It's good to see you, Vistron. Ink water, eat more protein. Common reasons for feeling tired. Interesting. Maybe I'll do that. Well, I think prismatic. I mean, she does cast prismatic magic, right? It doesn't just have to be a physical thing to be a, like a prism, right? She is the prismatic elder dragon, right? She is the multi spectrum dragon. It's interesting to me that she's a multi spectrum dragon because that kind of just all on its own escapes the idea that we need six replacements like she's the one replacement because she can have them all like that's the thing like we're creating a super god dragon that's what we're doing the prismatic one will be the everything one how many build templates am i gonna buy however many i can afford depends what gem prices are like at the time and how many precursors i've made but probably I'll, on this i'll buy all three and then uh, other characters as and when I need them. But having six on list seems pretty cool to me. Maybe my Necro will get some as well. But I mean, three's a fuck ton. For any any class, like, I'll have, like, a setup on my Ellie for, like, support. And I'll have one set up for damage. And I'll have some, one set up for Condi Weaver. That's three slots. And that's pretty much the three big identities I want. That's the three big builds for my Ellie that I give a fuck about. And would want to swap around quickly and easily. Necro, I'd probably want, you know... A DPS Reaper variant, a Scourge variant, a Condi Scourge variant, and um, I don't know. I don't know what the last one would be. Some kind of death gimmick build, maybe. I mean, uh, honestly, three is a good number for, for most characters. I'll probably try and max the bank out as well. That might be a part of Master in the end. Someone says, why is the Doom Lord meta key so much more expensive than the others? And someone else said, dunno, maybe some people just hate swamps. It's not really a swamp up there, is it? It's not a swamp. It's really just your Mesmer that's going wild? Yeah, I mean, I would just have multiple Mesmers. I do have multiple Mesmers. 
Again, like, when it comes to PvP, there's not... PvE isn't that elaborate. PvE isn't that interesting. PvE doesn't even need that many builds. PvP, I could have so much fun with it, but it's not even in the game, so... It's not even going to be added in the patch, so... Just away. Someone saying that's plenty. Be careful, WP. No, I'll, I'll, I'll go toe to toe with anyone who tries to argue with me. Like, oh, I can, I, I, I don't want to do this. Oh my God! I just swapped a specialization line manually. I just want to press F3. <gasps> yeah, all right, mate. Like, come on. Oh, I don't want to swap two bits of gear to put some toughness up. <gasps> All right, look, okay, look, uh, I'm going to leave it there, guys, because uh, I want to start this PvP stuff, and I feel really tired, so I want to, you know, go, I don't know, maybe eat something, maybe exercise, do something, feel a little bit more awake. Uh, to those who are going to be doing the monthly uh, team thing, that's going to be in about 50 minutes. Uh, we've been going for a, uh, an hour and a, a quarter here on today, but also I'm just wandering around Grothmar, and I don't want to put out boring content. I don't want to put out lazy content, and that's what I feel like it is today. I need to do something else on Master. So tune in tomorrow for that and uh, all the stories of how that other stuff's been going. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed. Thanks very much uh, for coming, hanging out, even if it's just a little while. If you want a lot more entertainment, I do recommend go finding someone else in the Guild Wars 2 category who has no viewers. Uh, you can come hang out in Discord. And uh, until tomorrow, uh, I'll be back very soon, guys. Thanks very much for watching. I, I really appreciate it. Hope you feel like you got some uh, good value out of this. And I'll see you soon. Cheers, guys.